invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed. A year ago, when Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, in America is a big business, magazine. Wonderful thing about American magazines. They're full of advertisements. And the advertisements I like the most are the ones that tell you how to make a lot of money easy. <laughs> they say, become rich overnight. Grow mushrooms in your cell. <laughs> become rich overnight. Make Indian bead rings. Become rich overnight. Learn the meat cutting in your own living room. <laughs> Mamma mia, if I could only stay up for three nights, I'd make a fortune. <laughs> but there's another advertisement that says, make a hundred dollars a week, become a secretary stenographer. Then I read them all and I see it's a no good for me. It's only for somebody who's got a short hand. <laughs> <laughs> These things sound very good, Mamma mia. But if you're not smart, like your Luigi, is it possible to get fooled? Like one advertisement I see that say, we pay you big money. Write to box of 22. Mamma mia, how can this company have a money if they got office in a box? <laughs> Most foolish advertisement I see is the one that say, we give you pants one third off. <laughs> Mamma mia, isn't that stupid? How am I going to look walking in the street to wear my pants are one-third off? <laughs> All the stories add that say, learn about the, your telephone company. Mamma mia, there's a plenty to learn. This morning, I'm going to receive a bill from a phone company that's charging me for longer distance calls to California that I'm going to never make. I always try to conduct the business honest. So this is worrying me very much. So I go to my night school teacher, Miss Spaulding, and maybe she can explain why. All right, all right, all right. Quiet, class. I'll call the roll. Basco. I'm a hip. Horowitz. Yeah. Olsen. Go on, half. Schultz. Schultz, you're here, aren't you? Yeah, but I'm not squealing. <laughs> You <laughs> like that show, yeah? <laughs> oh, I should be a sensation in television. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. You are very funny, and it is not necessary to dip your finger in the inkwell. Now, class, our lesson for today is English. What is it, Mr. Basco? Why are you raising your hand? Miss Farthing, I got a problem. Today I'm going to receive a telephone bill with a charge for call to California I never make. Well, Mr. Basco, I'll help you with your phone problem later, if you don't mind staying after class with me. Well, I'm... I'm... I should say you stay out of it. I'm a glad to stay, Miss Paul. Luigi is the DJ's pet. <laughs> <laughs> now, class, class, I enjoy a good laugh as well as anyone, but we must get on to our study. Now for our English lesson. Now, who will volunteer to conjugate the verb to see? Well... Who will volunteer? No volunteers? Looks like somebody's going to have to be the after. <laughs> well, I'll have to call on somebody. Mr. Olsen. Uh, yeah, all right, I volunteer. <coughs> I conjugate the, the, the verb to see. See, uh, saw. See, saw. See, saw. Olsen, stop already. You're making me dizzy. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, you are disrupting the class. Now, let me hear you conjugate C. I see, you see, he see, she see, we see, you see, they see. 
Ghost, that's good. Good, that's perfect. <laughs> yes, it is at that. To tell you the truth, was a lucky guess. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, who will conjugate the verb using a subject? Uh, like Mary. Uh, Mrs. Spalding, I'd try. Go ahead, Mr. Basco. I see Mary, you see Mary, he sees Mary, she sees Mary, we see Mary, you see Mary, they see Mary. Mary should pull down her window shades. <laughs> Please. That was very good, Mr. Basco. Now, could you conjugate a verb of your own? Sure. I take a verb to pay. Fine. You pay telephone a company? <laughs> he pay telephone a company. Now, wait a minute. You left out I pay telephone company. I'm a no pay. I never met telephone company. <laughs> well, I can see we'll have to settle that problem now. Now, Mr. Basco, why don't you go down to the phone company and explain things to them? They're very fair, and if they're wrong, you won't have to pay. I don't have to pay? Thank you, Miss Pausing. Luigi, Luigi, wait, wait, wait for me. Oh, you walk so fast. <laughs> Look, look at me. My tongue is hanging out like a cooker spaniel. <laughs> Luigi, my friend, I got to talk to you. Oh, what's the matter, Schultz? Don't go to the phone company. Well, why not? A terrible thing happened to my cousin Hugo. Oh? You know, he once got at a big telephone bill. He tried to argue with the telephone company. He got them mad, and they made him pay it anyway. <laughs> they made him pay? Yeah, yeah, but for the last ten years, he's been getting even with them. How? Every time the telephone rings, he don't answer. <laughs> but Schultz, if I don't go to the telephone company, what am I going to do? Luigi, in my head, an idea just pooped. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you go to your friend, Alderman Johnson? Let him investigate it for you. That's right, the Schultz. Alderman Johnson, he's all the way to try to help him. Sure. I got him right now. Thanks, the Schultz. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Luigi. And remember, smile. What if you do get into trouble with the telephone company? What can they do? Can they hang you? Can they shoot you? Can they throw you in jail? Schultz, can they? How should I know? Am I a lawyer? Hello, Mr. Alderman Johnson. You remember me? Why, of course. You're the serviceman for Culligan Saltwater Service. Well, you certainly took your time coming. But I'm going to have to... No, no, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. I know every voter in my district. You're, uh... Um, uh... Well, don't stand there. Give me a hint. You ever hear of a Luigi Busco? I certainly, certainly. Great friend of mine. Nothing he wouldn't do for me. Ah, broke my heart the day he left for France. <laughs> I'm a Luigi Busco. Oh. Well, how was the trip? I never went, sir. <laughs> Mr. Alderman Johnson, you know me. I'm Luigi Basco. I own an antique shop on Halstead Street. Oh, certainly, certainly. Now, uh, Mr. Basco, uh, what did you want to see me about? It's about telephone bills. This morning, it say, I'm going to make a longer distance call to California, and I'm going to never make it. I see, and you don't want to pay the telephone company. Oh, don't say that. I'm always trying to be good American. I'm obey every law. Sign in the street that says, Speed the limit, 25 miles an hour. I'm a never walker faster than a 25. <laughs> Sign in a zoo. Say, don't feed the monkey peanuts. I'm a never feed the monkey peanuts. I give him popcorn. <laughs> Sign is all over, say. No trespassing. Believe me, Mr. Alderman. I'm a hero one a year. And I'm never passing a train. Vasco, I know your problem. Now, you think the phone company's made an error, and you're a little afraid of it. That's right, Mr. Alderman. Phone company's so big, and... And a Luigi Vasco, he's a solid. Why, Vasco, you're as big as the telephone company. It's because the little people run America. Now you don't have to worry about a thing. I'll take care of all my voters. I'll get on the phone right now and straighten it out for you. Uh, give me your bill, Vasco. I only deal with the people on top. Hello, operator. 
Uh, let me talk to the president. Just tell him it's Alderman Johnson. All right. All right, then give me the vice president. Well, uh, how about the district supervisor? I see. Is the uh, chief operator in? No. Well, who? All right, give me that party. Hello. Information. Who do I speak to about paying a bill? <laughs> Mr. Alderman, maybe is it too much of trouble for you? I go myself. No, no, no. I... You leave it to me, Vasco. Hello, complaint department. This is Alderman Johnson. I'm talking for a constituent of mine. What do you mean by charging him for a long distance call he never made? You've got your nerve. What? It's Luigi Vasco, Sedgwick 3 9895. Yeah? Yeah? All right. Well, Vasco, you'll never have any trouble with the company again. I won't? No. They're taking out your phone tomorrow. <laughs> My friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pasquale. What's the matter, Luigi? Why are you so sad, my little man? You're looking like a little puppy with his tail between his ears. <laughs> Pasquale, it's a long story. This morning, I'm going to receive a wrong bill from telephone company. I ask him a spalling. She's going to say, go to company. Schultz is to say, go to Alderman. I go to Alderman, and he's to make even worse. Sure, she go to everybody but your best friend of Pasquale, and what's happening? Nothing. <laughs> Why are you running around like a crazy little squirrel looking for food when all the time you could have come straight to the nut? <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. Nobody's a bigger nut than you. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm a say it, it's a sound of death for us. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm in a trouble, and I'm a coming to ask you for favor. Phone the company is going to take a phone out of my store tomorrow. Luigi, why you have it to worry when you've got a good friend like Pasquale who's to bring you from all the country? You don't need a telephone, or you can use a mine. Is there no trouble, Pasquale? What a trouble. It's a pleasure. Every time there's a phone a ring, I call you. Thank you, Pasquale. You real a friend. Sure. Now, I do you a favor with a ring? You do me a favor with a ring. <laughs> Pasquale, what the favor I can do you with a ring? Slip it out of my daughter Rose's finger. No, no, Pasquale. I'm not going to play a ring around the rose. <laughs> it's no use, Pasquale. Rose is a nice girl, lovely girl. But she's a too fat for me. Luigi. <laughs> You call it 250 pounds of fat? What do you call it? I ask you first. <laughs> Pasquale, we just waste time of talking. I'm not going to marry Ross. All right, you big, stupid fool. Just because of a little thing like marrying my Rosie, you're going to lose your telephone. Pasquale, I'm not going to need your help. Maybe it's better I go myself at the telephone company and find out why they're charging me for this call to California. California? Wait, Luigi, don't be so impatient. I changed my mind. I'm going to help you. Then you're not angry with me, Pasquale? No. Hey, Luigi, you give me a telephone bill, go take a walk, and I'm going to fix everything up with a photo company. Pasquale, why you do this? Because you, Pasquale, you love you like a... Don't say it. All right. You go for a walk, Luigi, my friend. I'm your countryman. I'm going to take care of everything. Thank you, Pasquale. You're welcome, Luigi. Abro, figure of brother, visima, abro, figure of brother, visima, fortratissima, fortratissima, fortratissima. Hello? Operator? Uh, give me the chief of supervisor. Hello, chief of supervisor. Uh, this is a very good friend of a Luigi Basco, 21 North Holstead Street, telephone number Sedgwick, 3989 I'm understanding you want to take out of his telephone next week. I think it's very bad of you to take a man's business away. It's a bread and a butter. Huh? What's a Bosco's business? He's a bookie. <laughs> Oh, 
And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, is a big trouble with me. I don't know what the Pasquales do to help me with a telephone company. All I know is, this morning, man has come in, asking me to put two dollars on a nose. Soon as I'm a put it under my nose, he's a disconnected the telephone. <laughs> and the Mamma Mia, when a man is a loser, he's a telephone, he's a no use talking. Anyway, I'm a sitting in my store, wondering what I should do next, when I suddenly open up the door and a big wind comes in. Luigi, my friend! <laughs> Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, Luigi, you mind if I'm using your telephone to thank you? Hello, operator. Operator. Hey, Luigi, you got a funny kind of operator. She's a no talk. <laughs> Must be Johnny Belinda. <laughs> Pasquale, phone the company is a disconnect to my phone. What? After I'm going to say such a good things about you? Pasquale, just the what is it that you say about to me? Why, well, I'm a praise of you, Luigi. I'm a tell him uh, Luigi is a man uh, who knows his oats. Uh, also, he's got a very uh, stable uh, character. <laughs> well, thank you, Pasquale, but it's a very strange to me. I don't can understand what's uh, happening between me and the phone company. Hello, Luigi. Hello, Pasquale. Hello, Schultz. Hello, Schultz. <laughs> Luigi, how you make it out with the telephone company? Schultz, uh, I'm going to get lots of trouble. My phone died. <laughs> oh, smile, Luigi. If you ever want to get a message to California, I'm going to lend you a carrier pigeon. <laughs> Smart, Alec, a delicatessen in a man of Schultz. How's a little bird like a pigeon going to carry Luigi to California? <laughs> he carry him pigeon bag. <laughs> On you, Bush, come on. I, you don't know what he's talking about. Wait a minute, Schultz. Listen, it's Schultz and a Pasquale. No fight, no fight. I'm in a trouble. Why don't you go straight to the telephone company, tell them your story, and let them straighten out the whole thing? Don't go, Luigi. Go. Don't go. Go. Don't go. How do you like that? They went. <laughs> Bell Telephone Company. Mamma Mia, is a big building. Oh, here's a sign on the side of the building. It says, uh, Bell Telephone Company, Estab, 1878. <laughs> Poor Mr. Bell, he was a stabbed in 1878. <laughs> No, no, I, I must be wrong. A stab, eight, one, eight, to seven, eight. That's uh, the telephone number. <laughs> <laughs> well, Luigi Bascona, don't be so nervous. Like all the men say, America is on the side of a little man. And I'm a little man. Well, I'm going inside and find out what's the weather telephone called to California. Excuse me, lady, please. I'm coming here about a call to California. This is a Bell Telephone Company, no? Yes. I'm a like to speak to Mr. Bell. Mr. Bell is dead. All right, I wait. <laughs> you don't understand, sir. Mr. Bell is no longer with us. That's not the nice. A man has spent his whole life inventing telephone, now he's a get a fired. <laughs> sir, Mr. Bell still owns the company, but he's dead. Oh. Then maybe I speak to Mrs. Bell. Mrs. Bell is not here either. And Mr. Bell is not here. Mrs. Bell is not here. Who's the watch of the business? <laughs> Sir, I'm really not qualified to answer all your questions. Why don't you go see the head operator? Head operator? Yes, two flights up, first door to the right. Thank you, lady. Mamma mia, I'm learning something every day. Just for now, I find out there's two kinds of operators. With the head and without the head. <laughs> trying to explain to you, Mr. Basco. The company is actually owned by five million shareholders. Five a million? That's right. And when the profits are added up, they divide every nickel. Mamma mia. 
When they get through with that nickel, it must be in a terrible shape. <laughs> Mr. Vasco, for two and a half hours, I've tried to explain. I've... I've... Uh, Mr. Vasco, why don't you go see a vice president? Mr. Vasco, this is unprecedented. You've disrupted our entire organization. I'm a sorry, Mr. Vice President. But do you think it's nice for Chicago Telephone Company to be mad at me? Even when the two people is mad, they talk once in a while. All right, you don't ring my phone no more. At the least, maybe once a day you should have given me a little tinkle. <laughs> the telephone company is not angry with you. Then why the telephone company is disconnecting my phone? Just because I'm never make a call to California. Mr. Vasco, really, you must have made that call. Our company never makes a mistake. Now, do you realize what happens every time you pick up your phone? A thin plate of soft iron called the diaphragm, vibrates to your sound wave. Oh. Now, this in turn affects a tiny magnet and is electrically transmitted, causing the diaphragm to vibrate. Oh. Then what do you think happens when the two metallic contacts are made? Oh, no. Charlie Operator says it deposit another five cents. To no. <laughs> An automatic record is immediately stamped on a card bearing your phone number. Now, Mr. Vasco, we never make mistakes. Then there must be something wrong with the way telephone company advertises. What do you mean? All the papers is a show picture of a lady with a telephone, and she's a saying, sorry, wrong number. <laughs> Mr. Vasco, that is a picture. I know it's a picture, but if you never make a mistake, you should show a picture of a lady, and she's a saying, I'm happy, write the number. <laughs> Mr. Vasco, listen to me. We are very patient here at the telephone company. But facts are facts. You made this call to California. Therefore, you must pay for it. And now, to prove to you just how right we are and how patient we are, I'll double-check your file. Believe me, sir, I've been a vice president of the telephone company for 20 years. Nothing goes wrong here. I'll now call our filing department. Hello? Hello? <laughs> How do you like that? The phone is dead. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, my little man. You find out about that call to California? Pasquale, it was the worst day in my life that I ever went there. I'm going to make a, so much of trouble, the vice president is to throw me out. Vice president? Oh, Luigi, that's a terrible. Why? Vice President's a very big man in this country. He's going to report to you. And you know what comes after report? Deport. <laughs> and that's going to be the story of your life. Four words. Import, the report, the deport, export. <laughs> oh, but, well, I'm going to want so much to stay in America. Help me. I'm a sorry, Luigi. I'm a like very much to help you, but I'm a know the facts. I must testify in a court against you. <laughs> but, Pasquale, why you must testify against me? Oh, it's a big law here. It's called uh, habeas corpus. <laughs> uh, and even if I'm a no testifier, my Rosa, she's still got to testify because uh, she's living next door. Pasquale, help me. Is there nothing I can do? Nothing. Wait. I'm a just to remember. It's another big law. Wife, and not going to testify against the husband. But you're not my wife, Pasquale. <laughs> no, but I know a certain party who's willing to make the biggest sacrifice. Who? Welcome home, my son. Hello, Papa. <laughs> oh, now I'm happy. Rosa. Rosa. Rosa! You call me Papa! <laughs> Come here, Rosa. Say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. 
Bless to you, my children. And I'm a hope for you live together happily ever after. Papa, does this mean we're already married? Oh, shut up your face. <laughs> Is Mr. Basco here? I'm Luigi Basco. Uh, Mr. Basco, I'm from the phone company. We've investigated that California call, and we find it was made to the Hollywood Matrimonial Agency. Hollywood, the Matrimonial Agency? It's all right. I'm going to pay. Everything's going to be settled and nice and quiet. Uh, we investigated this phone call, Mr. Basco, and it seems the conversation was about getting a husband for a certain Rosa. Is he getting the past to my bedtime? Good night, everybody. <laughs> Shut up your face. Come with me. No, oh, it was you, Pasquale. You used my phone for your call to California. Uh, Mr. Vasco, it may interest you to know anyone who uses your phone without your permission is liable to a lawsuit. Pasquale. <laughs> yes, my son. Happy as the corpus, Papa. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, Mamma Mia. This is your son, Luigi. Talking to you on the telephone. Huh? No, no, it's, it's not a dream, Mamma. It's really true. Is it your son? Yeah, yeah, you're a boy, Luigi. You know, hear my voice in more than a year. What the? What? Go ahead, Mamma. I don't care what it cost. Go ahead. Go ahead. Cry. Sure, cry. <laughs> I think I'm going to cry, too. <laughs> how, how is your Uncle Pietro? Oh, good, good. And he's a goat. <laughs> oh, he's a goat, he's a got married. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure. When is Uncle Pietro going to get married? <laughs> what? Oh, he's going to wait and see how it's going to turn out with his goat. <laughs> No, no, don't worry about the cost of this to call the mama. Don't worry. How's Aunt Francesca? Good, good. And a cousin of Salvador. Oh, that's a fine, Mama Mia. Uh, mama, are you sure you feel good? Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. What the? Huh? I don't understand. You no get the marshmallows? Where do you hear about the marshmallows? Oh, you read all about the marshmallow plan. <laughs> but, but the, well, Mama, Mama Mia, is there somebody here want to talk to you? Now, wait a minute. Pasquale, go ahead, Pasquale. Hello, Mama Mia, goodbye. <laughs> what? Why is the Pasquale get off of the phone so fast? I'll tell you why, Mama Mia. Because he's a painter for this phone call. Be sure to listen next week at this time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff, Lou Derman, and Cy Howard and stars J. Carol Nash. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.